and we've been out on your doorstep in Monmouth shirt. Lily Hewitson is there for us this morning. Lily, what are people saying about the big stories today? Yes, good morning, Eamon and Isabel. I'm in Monmouth this morning, which is a beautiful market town just on the border between England and Wales. So it's just two miles uh, from that border. Now, we've been talking to people about that border in particular today, so people who live and work here in Monmouth, and what it's like being not too far from completely different restrictions and how it works for their customers um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm at the Savoy Theatre, and it's beautiful, as you can see. This is the oldest working theatre in Wales, and I'm joined by Chris now this morning to have a chat about a couple of things. How are you doing, Chris, this Hello, morning? Lily. Hi. Thank Fine. you so much for having us on your doorstep. Now Thank you've, you. you've just finished panto season here, haven't you? What was it like over Christmas here at the theatre? Oh well it was extremely challenging because of course in the week prior to the when the panto should have started, the First Minister made the announcement that we're going back to alert level two, which intrinsically meant social distancing. And most of the professional pantomimes in Wales closed on Boxing Day when those regulations came in because they couldn't cope with the social distancing. And we thought initially that's what we were going to have to do too. But we, uh, we had another think. And what we decided to do was that in the two days prior to Christmas, we would completely tear up all our seating plans here. We would tell people that we were going to reseat them in new performances and they would have to like it or lump it. Uh, if they wanted to see the pantomime, that's what they were going to have to do. So we reduced our capacity from 370 down to about 140. We put on a couple of extra shows. We managed to get people in that had previously booked for other shows. And we just got it on during that week. We managed to survive on much lower numbers. Um, so we got, it, we got it done. The show did go on. Oh, well, that's good to hear. A big effort indeed. How confusing has it been for customers and for you personally as a business right by the border, having those different restrictions? Because you've had a, a bit of backlash, haven't you, from customers who've not wanted to show the COVID passes, for example? Oh, yeah, well, it's extremely confusing and um, it's caused us a, a lot of problems. I mean, on November the 15th, the Welsh Government introduced the COVID pass for theatres and cinemas in Wales. And as you said in your introduction, we're only a couple of miles from the border. Well, in fact, we're only five miles away from the nearest cinema. So you've got a situation where you can go and see some of the same films that we put on only five miles away. You don't have to provide a COVID pass. You don't have to do the track and trace. And um, it's a much smoother and easier experience. So why on earth would you not want to go there? Um, and that applies to two or three other cinemas around here in Hereford or, um, or in Gloucester as well. So that's provided, provided a, a, an additional challenge. And of course, on the other side of the same coin, we occasionally show films here which they don't show in some of the other cinemas and therefore we do attract people from Herefordshire and Gloucestershire to come and see films here and they're not expecting to show a Covid pass because that's not a regulation that's required in England. So we've had a number of occasions when people have come in here, in fact it happens more or less every day to be honest, where people come in here not expecting to show a Covid pass and then we have a melee. Either they have to try and find one on their phone pretty quick or in extreme cases they have to, they have to uh, turn around and go home. And we've had quite a bit of, well, one or two nasty experiences as a result of that. The most drastic being a man who said he would blockade himself in the doorways that we're standing in now, um, because he said, if I'm not allowed in to see the film, then I'm damned if anybody else is going to be allowed in to see the film. Mm -hmm. So he was threatening to blockade the whole building. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, his wife told him not to be a silly boy, and they went off and went home, and they weren't able to see the film. But we've had extreme cases like that, three or four of them actually since, as though it's our fault that the regulations have been brought in. We argued against them at the time because we're not sure where the scientific evidence comes from. We're going to have from. to wrap it up there, though, Chris. Thank you so much. And it sounds very confusing. And that has been the general consensus here in Monmouth today from all the businesses that I've been speaking to, that it is very confusing living and working on the border because of those different restrictions with just a couple of miles in between each other. Well, from a centre of entertainment there, that old cinema, to uh, the entertainment that's happening here now with Hannah Hope, assistant showbiz editor of The Sun on Sunday.